Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to so this in the morning, 15 minutes to hopefully change our lives. This year is sponsored. Today's class is sponsored by Devar Leah, Mav Skivov, and family, Lil Nishmas Mother, Alisa Bino, Bas Leib. As you it was, Chav Ches Nissen. If you have an Alisa Neshama, may we be reunited with our loved ones, with Meshach right now. And in honor by anonymous, in honor for a first Shalema, for Naftali Ben Bluma, that they should have a speedy recovery and everything they need. They should have only good, only good things to share. Okay. And now we're getting into a little bit of the meat of the Maima. So essentially, what we're going to discuss today, and, and like we were saying yesterday, essentially a lot of life is about a perspective. And obviously, it's all about a perspective. And what we're learning in this Maima is teach us a perspective on how to look at life and people around us and how we interact with that and how we, we take that information. Now, we're going to bring from that result. So, yesterday, we were talking about the Sefer Mitzvahs that are bring, um, from the Chinuch, Sefer Chinuch, you bring down the Mitzvahs of Avish Yisrael and bring down the famous story of the Gemara that, um, a base that's right, uh, yeah. That Hill said, Hill Azakin said, or whatever, you don't like to be done to yourself. That Allah Sunday, that for you is hated, the Khabercha Lay Savit, you find you shouldn't do. And this is the whole Torah, and the rest is a, just a, a pirish on this. So we ask the question, what do you mean? How can you say this? First of all, okay, I can understand you're talking about mitzvahs between us and another person. <laughs> obviously, so with obviously, so like explain with obviously, so I'll help you do all these mitzvahs. I can also understand. But, but how can it be between us and Hashem? Like, like how does that connect? I have obviously soul, but what about what Hashem? What's it going to do with Hashem? And do mitzvahs, let's say Shabbos, keeping Shabbos, you know, it's something for Hashem. How obviously soul help keeping Shabbos? And like even more, like we said, even so, Dr. Martin, like, you know, if, 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 what can you really give to David Vishnu? What can you really give God? He's so righteous, so everything. But, and even more so, so when it comes to uh, talking about obviously so that it's just between uh, two people or people amongst themselves, how can you say that, you know, that's, that, that affects the mitzvahs between us and God? That's what we need to, we need to understand. So we're going to bring them from our Rizal. Just a quick story that when I was a kid in school, I was in public school, and I knew this concept, I don't know what it was, but I was connected to this a little bit, and we had to write an essay or something, so I wrote about this, this concept. Whatever is hated to your friend, don't do. So one of the teachers, he was a, he was a funny guy a little bit. And he said to me, see, he, he, he saw it. I don't know how he saw it, but it was like he was a woodwork teacher or something. And he said to me, so he said to me, does that mean that if you like someone, uh, I can't remember what he said, someone like doing something to you, that means you can do it to someone else? Like he, he switched into the positive. Meaning, if you like it when someone, uh, you know, rubs, rubs your back, does that mean you should go around rubbing everyone's back? So he asked me that. I don't know what his intention was many years ago, but it made me think, like, that's a good, like, a good question. And I thought then, I thought I have like this. The, the dafka, the reason why he says it in the negative is because but seemingly the, the language he uses is Hillel. He goes, whatever you don't like, don't do it to others. Why not say it in the positive? Whatever you like, do it to others. And this is what the teacher was sort of saying. But I think, I think sort of that was, it's not, it's not a, so I learned it then. It's not a, that whatever you like, do someone else, do it to someone else. What if they don't like it? So that's why it's a more than negative. Whatever they don't like, don't do it. So it's not a sort of free reign to go do things just because you want to do it, but it's about the person. Some interesting story. Okay, in this book, in this safer, page 16, Ois Aleph. Behine, behold, the time, Amitzah, that Rizal brings down, the Rizal is in Sefer Kabbalah, is the Kabbalist in the 1500s. The Rizal writes in the, in, is brought down in the time, Amitzah, is Pashik Deshim. And then in his name, Kasav Arizal Vizel Hashem, it says this is his language. This is what he writes. He says, "Call you, call you, Yisrael, Soed Guf Echad, Shon Nishmas Admiration. We're all one body, uh, like a general body, comprising of one complete body of the Nisham of Admiration. Hanoi Datsleinu, as it's known by us, 
like it says also in Sefer Gigul in Parak Aleph base. And this is a very fundamental point that we're bringing out. This might be really stresses. Every single yid is one limb. We're all one limb of this huge body. So we're not, this is, this is like a, the axiom, how to look at it. We're not separate beings. We're essentially one. You know, it's like they say about with the chuppah, when you get married, and you come into the chuppah, they all say that two halves of one song. So, so essentially, we are the ha, we are not has, we are like all comprised all together of one. <laughs> Hannah's coming to join us in the show. So, we call Echad Mishal, who every part every single year is one limb. And this is the, the mutual responsibility. If a person sins, one Jew is accountable to the other. Meaning, and he explains, that's why the Riza would say vidui. Uh, so Arizal would be confessing, confessing for sins. Now, of course, the question is, Arizal didn't do anything in sins. <laughs> what is he confessing about? So the, so the explanation that we're giving here is was Arizal is connected, the, all the Yidin are connected. And therefore, when I, when, when, even though, let's say, I didn't do anything wrong, but there's a Yid out there that did, didn't do all the misses we're meant to do, so that affects me because we're all connected. And this is the accent that we're using here. This is, it's, it's a beautiful way of understanding everything. If you look at it through this perspective. When you look at another Yid, you have to look at them not as someone else, someone separate, but as part of me. We're all part of the same body. And therefore, when there's something wrong with that Yid, it means there's something wrong with me. And, and, and of course, the opposite. If there's something wrong with me, it's also something lacking within them. It says, it says in Shulchan Aruch, I learned this months ago, and it really blew me away. It says, Alter brings down, in, in regards to Hilchus talus, that let's say a person puts on a talus and, and they'll, they'll fulfill the midst of a talus, they're wearing a talus, let's say, and someone else comes into shul and that person doesn't know how to, how to, how to read, read Hebrews and say the brachis. So the Alter Rebbe says, even though you fulfilled your obligation of putting on a talus, so you don't have obligation to say the bracha, you can make the bracha for that person that can't make the bracha. And he explains, and he says, why? Because like this, we're saying here, call you solar ravens of Azam. We're, we're all mutually responsible for each other. So he says, therefore, you have the obligation to make the bracha. You haven't fulfilled your obligation making a bracha on the talus. Even though you have already, a being that your friend, someone else that doesn't know how to make the bracha, hasn't, because you're connected, so you still have the obligation. And he brings it down to different, uh, different ideas as well. But this is what we're saying. We're all connected. So that Rizal, even though that Rizal is a Tadik, he's perfect, he didn't do anything wrong. But being that there's a Yid in the world that, did, that hasn't fulfilled the missions he meant to fulfill, so then that Rizal himself is lacking. He calls himself Guf Echod Ad Kanoshen. And this is the, until here is the language of the Tamea Mitzvahs. So the, now the Tamea Mitzvahs is going to explain what this means. So the explanation of this idea is Shad Marisha and Haya Klalus called Nishama is Kulam Bisa. The other mission has within inside of him the Nishama of all, all encompassing Nishama that has all Nishamas within it. So, like in the brackets, besides when Mishah comes, those Nishamas, and besides the ones that are going to come into this world after Tikhas Mason. But every, every Nishama, all of us, all have a part of Adam and Rishim. We're all, we're all connected. We all come from the same neshama. We're all family. Shahaya kail kulam mehen nisnem nislim reishay mehem bizrayim, and and all of us are part of this this sort of body. Some of us are from the head of the body. Some of them are the feet. Some of them are the arms. Well, we, but we're all one body all together. Vashem zeh nikar adam. And that's why Adam Rishon was called Adam. Why, why was his name Adam? One of the reasons because it's Adam el Because it comes from the language of like, similar to above. Adam el I resemble the one above. Yerubachin is called because he is this encompassed general level. Just like above, that's how it works. So that's what he was. He was similar to this idea. 
and, and just like we see here, that, that his neshama includes within it all of us. That it's drawn down from this level of Adam de Leila, it's higher Adam, higher man, which is comprised of the Yud spheres, which is called like a parts like a face, a face comprised of all these different parts. So that's what it, that's what it can, of few organs. So, so that was him. And like it says, my son, my firstborn son, Yizom. So the son comes from the father, so to Adam Rishon comes from Adam and Leelia, and this is, I think it's in the level of Atzillus, comes from there, and, and that's where we all come from. Behold, before I explained elsewhere, and Adam de Leila, and this idea of Adam de Leila, so we're going to just say this last point, and it's all about, it's, and it's a level of Shema. This Adam Leelia, Connected with this level called Ma. Shehu b'china Shem Ma. Now, now Ma. There's different ways, and we're going to explain this. Ma of Tikkun. Now, there's different ways of explaining, uh, of uh, different level, different names of God. You have Ma, Man. And there's, there's, there's a lot, and each one. What are, what do they represent? Different ways of saying Hashem's name. You have Hashem's name. I did a little chat over here. Hopefully, everyone can see it. So you have here, you have Hashem's name, the Yud, K, Vav, K. The Yud, the He, the Vav, and the He. So that grammar, if you add it up, a Yud and a He and, an, and, a, and a Vav and a He, it adds up to 26. So that's Shema Vayim. Now, there's different ways of, of, of doing it. And there's one of the ways called Milui, that it's the field, meaning instead of saying Yud and just writing a, a little Yud, but you can say Yud, how do you spell out Yud? The word, the letter Yud, is Yud Vav Dalad, Yud, Yud Vav Dalad. You see here? Yud Vav Dalad. So then if you take every letter of the Yud, the He, but you do it out in, 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 in its fullness, so the Yud would be Yud Vav Dalad, the He is He Aleph, the Vav is Vav Aleph Vav, yeah? And the last day is He Aleph. Now, if you, if you add that up that way, that equals 45. This is ma. Ma is mem is 40 and he is five. So that's the same word, but but included with so much more. So what we're saying is, and we're going to discuss it more tomorrow, that that Adam, that Adam's neshama, with that where Adam comes from, which is ultimately the source of where we all come from and why we're all connected, is from Shema of Tikkun. Tikkun is like the world, the difference between the world of Tikkun and Toyo. You know, you go, that's a whole for in itself, but in simple. Well, the Tikkun explains here is that it's divided into three levels, which you have like Chesed, Gevur, and Tiferes. And you see in the, in the chart of how they set up the spheres, you have these three lines, but essentially Tikkun is a world that it was fixed. There was a lot of Kalim, not a lot of lights, and basically had the ability to join together. And we all can receive from each other. The world of Toyo, on the other hand, which is a world which was chaotic, and it says over here in the moment that it's, it's like one below the other, which means no one get along. And ultimately, if we're talking about Avis Yisrael, why do we have, where, where we have this level of Avis Yisrael is coming from this level of Tikkun, of the Ma of Tikkun. If the Ma comes into the Tikkun, that Ma, which is, which is taking all that, you know, not the, not the simple short version, but all the different levels, bringing it all together and putting it into this level of Tikkun, which ultimately is how we have Avis Yisrael. So just to end off, uh, a takeaway message is, is when we look at another person, how do we look at them as separate beings, totally separate from me? And therefore, I judge them in any way. All look at them as part of me. We're all part and parcel of the same people. Like we say, this is in Tanya, all, you know, all one father, but we're all connected. We're all one. And, and therefore, and that's how you can have, obviously, so like you do in Mufti. When, when you see another person, if you see them as someone separate from you, goes, oh, there's a Nabach over here that needs filling or that needs the Shabbos candles. Whereas here, what we're saying is, this is my brother. This is my sister. This is my family. And, and if, my, if someone in my family is lacking, I'm also lacking. So we should have a tzlacha in looking at people in this way. We should have an amazing day. To be continued tomorrow, Mitzvah Hashem. Thank you, everyone, for joining.